Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Wednesday. It is January 26th. We're going to start off before starting off Acts 20 with a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always prevent and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, we're going to be looking at the first part of Acts chapter 20. We're going to read through verse 16. Hear the word of the Lord. After the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he said farewell and departed from Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months, and when a plot was made against him by the Jews as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Sopater the Berean, son of Perhus, accompanied him, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derbe, and Timothy, and the Asians Tychicus and Trophimus. These went on ahead and were waiting for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days we came to them at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered, and a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. And being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down and bent over him, and taking him in his arms, said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while, until daybreak, and so departed. And they took the youth away alive, and were not a little comforted. But going ahead to the ship, we set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul aboard there, for so he had arranged, intending himself to go by land. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and went to Mytilene. And sailing from there, we came the following day opposite Chios. The next day we touched at Samos. And the day after that, we went to Miltus, for Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he might not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hastening to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. And so we have here another interesting story that's surrounded by a whole bunch of travel, right? We're seeing all these controversies in the early church, not necessarily controversies within the church, while there were plenty of those when you read Paul's epistles. Uh, You see those issues. But the controversies are uh, the persecution that is coming to the church. Everywhere Paul goes, there are people who are opposing the gospel. And so eventually there's something going on in these areas and Paul moves on. And we see those stories over and over, don't we? Well, in the midst of those stories on these uh, basically the missionary journeys of Paul, him him moving around and, and going from one place to another. We get these little nuggets, nugget stories that are interesting, don't we? And here's this interesting about Eutychus. Now, we see here that Paul is preaching on the first day of the week. Uh, and notice it says, when we gather together to break bread. Now, what's the significance of that? Why Why did I highlight that other than the fact that he preached too long and he put somebody to sleep? Now, um, the main reason I highlighted that, as you can see here, is this first day of the week. Notice that Christians are starting to meet on the first day of the week in remembrance of the Lord's day, the day he rose from the dead. So this is an early indication for us that the church is doing what we do, meeting on the first day of the week instead of on the seventh day of week. The, the Sabbath. And so we see that starting to form here, that, that this is what the Christian community is doing out of honor of the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And what do they do? They gather together to break bread. They're participating in the Lord's Supper. They're having fellowship uh, meals together. They are gathering as a community of believers. Now, it's interesting what Paul does here. Paul preaches a long time. So uh, I don't know that I could ever dream to preach this long. I, I'm sure I put people to sleep. I always joke that I do. And I always joke that the babies are sleeping really well because they have to listen to me preach. But I don't know that I could go uh, on nearly as long as Paul here. Notice that he prolonged his speech until midnight. 
Uh, that would be hard. And notice that Luke draws this out here with verse 8. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered. In other words, it was dark. It really was late. Well, this one named Eutychus is sitting in the window. Now, here's an important thing. Never sit in the window when somebody's preaching, right? You can fall asleep real easy, fall out and hurt yourself, especially if it's a second story. Well, that does happen. Uh, Eutychus fell asleep, uh, falls down from the third story. I guess I just said second story, but it was the third story. And he was taken up dead. Now, in other words, he was dead. He must have broken his neck, something. They went down, checked on him, and this young man is dead. But Paul goes down, uh, takes him up in his arms, and he said, do not be alarmed, for his life is in him, and he comes back to life. And we, notice what it says here. Paul goes back in, and he he breaks bread with him. He keeps talking. Uh, this would have been a major deal. I mean, I can only imagine what people were thinking, but Paul seems to be, this, this, is, what, this is what happens. Now, the idea of what is happening here and, uh, and the reason Luke is informing us of this story amongst all the things that may have happened over the course of Paul's missionary journeys is that we see here Paul doing a miracle, bringing someone back to life. This shows the authority of Paul as an apostle. We see here that he has the authority to teach and to preach and to share God's word. This is this is a continued theme throughout the book of Acts. I, I've brought it up, brought it up several times. And again, it shows the power that the gospel has, that the, the ministers of the gospel have gospels have over life and death. Now they're not going around raising everybody, but we see these instances, uh, two instances in Acts where the apostles raise the dead. But we see these instances where, where we see the power of that the Holy Spirit has and, and the authority that the apostles have. And notice what verse 12 says, and they took the youth away alive and were not a little comforted. You got to love that that Luke uses phrases like that many times. I don't think I've pointed it out before. They were not a little, or, or it was, um, we see this, that uh, there were many lamps in the upper room. Uh, they they talk about, he, he expands things and gives us the idea of, of the fullness of things, right? He draws that out many times. And so we look at this and we wonder, where do we go with this passage for application? Uh, many times I've used application for passages throughout Acts that the word of the Lord continues. No matter what happens, it continues. That's not what we're going to do here today. Now, the easy one uh, might be don't fall asleep during a sermon uh, because I'm not going to be able to raise you back from the dead if you fall and break your deck while I'm preaching. No, that's not it either. The truth that we see here, that we need to remember, is the authority that the gospel, that the word of the Lord has in our lives. As it did with Paul, we see that this minister of the gospel is able to bring someone back from the dead. He has power. Why? Because the hand of God is upon him. And we're supposed to understand from that that the word that he teaches is has authority. And so we need to remember that this word of truth, this word of God, his law, his gospel— has authority in our lives. And we need to remember that that's important for us to consider from day to day, from moment to moment, because it is the standard by which we are to live, and it is the hope that we have. So may we let this word of authority, this word of the gospel, have the power in our lives to help us to walk in newness of life and to live in glory to God. Let us go to prayer. Try in God. We praise you for the great truth that we have been given new life in Jesus. May we be reminded of this mercy that you have shown to us today, that we might not only walk in newness of life and flee from sin, but also proclaim the freedom that you have blessed us with, that others may hear and believe. On this Wednesday, we lift up the missionaries that our congregation supports. We ask that you would bless them and keep them, and that you would embolden them to faithfully proclaim your gospel. And today, we especially remember the work of Hope Harbor and Marshall. We ask that you would bless the work of their hands, and we pray that you would strengthen them as they labor for your kingdom. And we ask that you would bless us today with a certain trust that your Holy Spirit is guiding us and doing that work that has been promised to be completed in us. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, have yourself a very, very excellent Wednesday.